good afternoon everybody respected uh, group coordinator research sri shetapanavarji uh, learned participants and my colleagues from uh, iwst i take this opportunity to welcome all of you uh, for this lecture on uh, fodder species for different agroclimatic zones in karnataka uh, as uh, most of you are aware that iwst is conducting a series of webinars and lectures under Raja Diki Amrut Mosso Initiative of Government of India. And we have conducted more than uh, 30 such webinars and lectures so far in the last uh, one and a half uh, years. And uh, uh, today's topic is a uh, little unique compared to our previous uh, training because today we are focusing mostly on fodder species. Previously, we were talking about timber species and uh, major tree species. Of course, today uh, we'll be covering a, a separate topic as i said it is mainly focusing on fodder species going to decrease in uh, grazing lands and increasing awareness among the farmers about dairying and as well as agroforestry uh, in coming days there will be a lot of scope for the use of uh, fodder species uh, as part of uh, agroforestry system across karnataka uh, so i hope uh, today's lecture will be useful for all the participants to learn something new about fodder species. Uh, with this uh, few words, I would request uh, uh, Dr. B.S. Chandrasekhar for welcome address. For welcome address. Good afternoon, everybody. I welcome you all for this uh, lecture. Actually, this uh, I have based my lecture only on uh, the AACRP 17 fodder, what we have taken up under this CAMPA project. So this is a unique type of uh, project ICFRA has taken uh, to mitigate the grazing in the forest land so that uh, there won't be pressure on forest. So that there won't be, whenever there is a mass plantation done in the fringe area of forest, they generally due to grazing, all the plantation is. Uh, so to mitigate that, this ACRP has been uh, envisaged to have uh, selection of different fodder tree species as well as grass uh, for planting in the fringe areas and also uh, some of the tree for fodder species where in lean period also you get uh, fodder uh, for the livestock. So in the fringe areas not only cows and buffaloes which graze on that, the more uh, grazing is done by Sheeps and goats also, because sheep, as you people know, they graze, they are gregarious uh, eaters. They graze for long period, unlike uh, livestock like cow and buffaloes. And the goat, as you know, it will eat anything what is available, except few species which it won't graze. Otherwise, maximum 99% of the vegetation, goats will graze on. So to mitigate that effect and to save the uh, forest uh, species in the fringe areas, this project is envisaged. So I'll be just speaking about uh, those things only, what how we are going about in this project, ASRP, because all the nine uh, institutes under ICFRE is uh, uh, taking up this uh, project in their uh, jurisdiction areas. So we also have been given uh, our uh, jurisdiction area. And uh, what I have done here is I have selected three different climatic zones so that at least because all climatic zones will not have the same type of species and even the grass species and the tree species will not be suitable for all the climatic zones. So I have taken three different climatic zones that is broad three different climatic zones so that maximum species can be accommodated there and we can conduct experiments there and we can come out with some useful results so that we can recommend to either forest department or animal husbandry department, whoever is the stakeholder, we can recommend the results to them. That is the gist of this project and the presentation. I request GCR to speak few words about. Uh, good afternoon, friends. Today's topic is a bit unique, and uh, which is concerned with not only the livestock. It is uh, concerned to uh, animals uh, that are dwelling in the forest. So if you see uh, in the forest, the way the uh, wild animals distribution 
So if you map it, wherever there is a fodder and water availability is there, the maximum population and maximum diversity is uh, found. Uh, another thing is, so there is a seasonal migration because the palatable nature of the uh, fodder species will be there for some period of time. After some period of time, they get chorus and uh, the because of the silica and all that accumulation, uh, the, the palatability nature will go. So once, once they are non palatable, they start migrating to the different area where there is a uh, palatable fodder species available. So you can also, you might also seen in the great migration in African continent, uh, that is because of the water and uh, fodder. Even if you see uh, in the northern part of India, the the unique uh, lopping of the plants you can notice so very small crown is left out uh, on the top and the uh, rest of the branches are lopped so that is because a particular fodder species is available and uh, because of the availability of fodder scarcity of the fodder species in the forest they lop it and they feed it to the cattle or whatever the wild animal even, even uh, if you see the best uh, fodder management in case of Rajasthan, even though the water is scarce, but they have adopted uh, Ketki, there is a, a prosophysinary folia as a, as a plant, which is so helpful, no? uh, even in the drought condition, it, 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 it comes up and uh, it is a highly uh, prized and uh, fodder species and even the Animals, domestic animals, they like it very much. So the fodder, when it is palatable and having nutritive value, the availability is more. If it loses its nutritive ability, the coarse nature of the fodder is not fed. So with with this, now see um, if you consider the. Uh, the cattle uh, that are domestically reared. So issue with the forest department is uh, in several areas, animals are driven into the forest to graze without bothering about the damage to the forest. Uh, countless species of the flora and fauna are thus uh, disappearing. Because uh, if you see uh, the goat rearing, as you said, 90-95% uh, of the species is uh, uh, fed by the, uh, uh, this one, uh, what do you call, sheep and the goat. And that's why, you know, the problem of damage uh, by the domestic animals uh, has uh, serious. The forest department adopted different strategy. Uh, they started planting the non palatable species. So because of the non-availability of the fodder, it is very essential to cultivate some, take up some of the uh, uh, species in the farmland and uh, make available to the uh, domestic animal. Uh, with this, uh, whatever the experience uh, uh, BS has gained in the ASRP, he will present, I think. So thank you for providing the opportunity. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for highlighting the importance of uh, the topic. Uh, with this, uh, we conclude our inaugural uh, part of uh, this lecture series. Then I uh, will we'll request uh, uh, Chandrasekhar to deliver a talk on uh, tree fodder species and their nutritive value. Over to Chandrasekhar. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Shri Kumar. As in my initial uh, introduction, I just told you. So this AACRP mainly concentrates on uh, tree fodder species and grass species to mitigate the <coughs> grazing of forest uh, land. Uh, so that, uh, as her told, uh, there is huge loss of uh, herb, herb, herbs, especially, which have been. Uh, they also take a long time to germinate when the seeds fall because there is no a regular. Uh, uh, sowing period or uh, something like that, as we do in our uh, uh, 
cropland or something like that. Forest lands are very unique uh, ecosystem. What happens there is this flowering season, seed season, the seeds drop and it takes its own time to germinate and uh, establish. Sometimes what happens is uh, out of 100 seeds fallen, it's not uh, uh, guaranteed that all 100 seeds germinate, maybe over 10 percent, 15 percent germinate. And out of that, maybe only 5 percent survive and uh, they uh, survive and they establish and they reproduce. So this is the scenario what have exists in the forest uh, ecosystem. So what happens is if there is gregarious feeding in the forest ecosystem continuously, so this regeneration process is ampled. So when this regeneration process is ampled, what happens is, so if there is no seed production, so there will be the loss of species. So this happens with the herbaceous species. Grasses, there is no problem because grasses, they uh, propagate vegetatively also. But in forest land, more than uh, grazing on grasses, the grazing will be more on the herbaceous material, which is the important ground flora in the forest area. So to mitigate this, AACRP uh, on fodder was envisaged uh, at uh, Pan-India level by ICFRE with different uh, uh, objectives. So. So these are the issues concerned with forest uh, forestry sector. That is, in several areas, animals are driven into the forest to graze without bothering or damage to the forest. That is, many species and fauna are thus disappearing very fast because uh, ultimately livestock has to survive because uh, there should be income for the people who were in the fringe forest areas, the villagers. They uh, don't care about uh, what happens to the forest area or something like that. So the grazing is done in the forest areas continuously and there is lot of damage to the species. So that is a concern. So the forest department also cannot conduct surveillance over the entire stretch of forest because since it's a huge area, though to be vigilant on people who leave their livestock into the forest area, it's a really tough task for the forest department also. They cannot keep a watch on how many animals enter or who does it. So it will be difficult for them to the so the problem of damage to plants by domestic animals is very serious and hence forest department also has taken a lot of uh, efforts to mitigate this by planting non-palatable uh, species. And even if you plant non-palatable species also, animals are very intelligent. So they know what to eat and what not to eat. So they, def they definitely, if it's non-palatable, they don't touch that and they go and eat the palatable things. So it is just a effort planting a non-palatable species in the forest area, uh, we think that is non-palatable, even animal knows that it's non-palatable. So what happens is animal will definitely not eat on that and it will eat on the other species itself. So based on this uh, two objectives, Pan-India has been uh, and said that is standardizing the planting, management, production and fodder sharing procedures for enhancing the tree fodder availability in forest scarcity regions of India. That is the reason, but we are taking up this project in the region of Karnataka because of uh, we know the limitations, uh, time and uh, uh, budget. We have taken the agroclimatic zones of Karnataka. I will come to it later. So the second part is improving the nutritive value and storage life also because once you suggest uh, species to people that these are the species which has to be grown by you people so that your livestock will be having enough uh, fodder uh, material. So you should also tell them how it can be stored also because uh, the material cannot be continuously uh, harvested over a whole year. If it is a tree species, you can manage. If it is a grass species, you should have an alternative how you store it or how you grow so that the harvest will be in a different stage. So nutritive value definitely plays a very important role because if it is not very nutritive, so the livestock, because livestock dependency is again directly linked to the economy of the uh, country because uh, livestock, you see milk production based on the nutrition, then your meat production, everything is dependent on the nutrition of the uh, fodder. So mainly if the nutrition, uh, nutrition, mainly it is proteinaceous. If it is proteinaceous, your milk yield will be good. And even if it is proteinaceous, your meat yield also will be good because 
protein is the building block as you people know. So the meat increasing also, you should have a good protein value. So all the species which are leafy fodders, we look upon the protein value also of that species. So these are two objectives with which So this is a, just a, to give an idea of the current status, how it is uh, the feed and fodder availability estimates up to 2004, that is around 89 million metric tons availability out of this total uh, 462 metric ton green fodder as per planning commission report. So there is a lot of gap in between. So what is the need of the fodder availability? Because livestock also is increasing because over the years we have seen there is a change in agriculture uh, pattern also, people, they have shifted from cropping system to farming system, that is livestock rearing. They have started uh, doing uh, livestock rearing. That is, uh, they are thinking that that will be easy and it will be a regular income because of the failure of rain, monsoons, they are not sure about the crop yield, how the crops uh, yield every year. So livestock is a good uh, option for them. So they are shifting towards Livestock management. So based on this, in this project, we have listed out this many species. Actually, these are the tree species which yield good fodder and they have good for protein value also uh, for, uh, for as far as the leafy material is concerned. So some of the species are very common species. That is acacia. These are for the dry zones. Dry zones, the acacias they good do good uh, do good. Then Azar tractor is in Neem, Ayalanthus. Ayalanthus is again, it is uh, the coastal belt what we have in our Karnataka stretch. Where there you cannot expect uh, species like Azar Tracta, Acacia to come out very well because they are all uh, trout species. So where there is a good amount of uh, rainfall and moisture, so species like Ayalanthus, then uh, uh, Talbergia, then uh, Dazostromia, Sesbania, Caliandra, these type of species come out very well in the coastal areas and where there is good amount of moisture. So species of drylander, Acacia, Azadirecta, then Prosophis. Prosophis is very well known because with even a very minimum rainfall also, Prosophis comes out very well and it gives out very good uh, <coughs> leaf forage. That is, even pods are also having good protein value because uh, even pods are also eaten by livestock, Prosophis especially. All this Acacia, Members of Acacia family, that is uh, even Prosophis also belongs to the same family. Their pods are good uh, source of uh, fodder. Why? Because sheep, especially they eat on the fruits also, like Prosophis full fruits, Acacia fruits, they eat on these fruits and the seeds have good protein in them. So that is uh, the good source of fodder for especially sheep. And Moringa. Moringa is a very common species grown uh, pan India with different uh, amount of yield actually because it is also again a dry land species but it goes very well even in a uh, good amount of moisture place also that is maybe the yield of uh, fruit and uh, leafy material may be a little less but comparatively it's a good crop because you can have a rotation crop also even if you Copies it, it grows very well and the new shoots come out. So there will be a all round year you have fodder availability for your uh, uh, livestock. Sesbania grandiflora is uh, agassi. So that is also a good uh, material. Even in this uh, plant species, you know, tree species, you leaf as such, it is a good uh, material as fodder. But even pods are also having good protein uh, content. I think protein content is around 30% uh, in this uh, species. So it's a good source of fodder for animals. In regions of some sub Himalaya uh, type of places, uh, they have selected Kirkpes, Populus, all the species, which are the species of sub Himalayan uh, places. So what we are expecting in this uh, project is uh, uh, that is multi-use trees will be raised. Actually, we are targeting 
at the fringe forests only. So the main need is by the state forest departments only. State forest department they need our uh, intervention because uh, there should be a scientific base when we recommend uh, these species can be grown in this area. So there should be some scientific base that this species come out very well and it will not disturb the other flora of the forest also because once the seeds produced because we are not managing inside the forest. So seeds produced should not be again a menace over there and it should not be an invasive. So we should uh, be uh, taking care of that also. Whenever we suggest any tree species there, the tree species, the fruits also should be eaten by the livestock. So that even uh, sometimes what happens, seeds will be dispersed elsewhere. Because all livestock, when they eat the fruits, they won't dull there. Na? Then they go out and their, their uh, dumpings will be somewhere inside the village or somewhere there. So they, it will not be spread inside the forest at all. Uh, to the maximum extent, there might be minimum spread, but maximum it will be avoided. So different protocols will be uh, developed. Uh, for, that is uh, for uh, nutrity value and uh, harvesting period, and also the type of uh, planting material suggest for different agroclimatic zones. So in this uh, project, uh, actually we are suggesting in the uh, forest uh, fringe areas, where there is a fallow land or something like that, there we are also suggesting uh, dense uh, plantation. How it uh, really be, uh, gives results when there is a dense row plantation of tree species, there is a check for the animal's movement also. And also if the uh, uh, fodder is available in the fringe itself in abundant quantity, so animals will not enter the forest area. That is one uh, thing. So this is one enhancement of nutritive value because in this project, actually, whatever experiments have been conducted, the fodder is harvested and then analyzed for the nutritive value also because we are growing it in three different agroclimatic zones. Definitely the soil characteristics vary and then uh, uh, climatic conditions vary. So definitely there will be a difference in the nutritive value also. So in this ASRP, we are concentrating only on Karnataka because uh, agroclimatic zones actually uh, in Karnataka, we have 10, 10 to 13 agroclimatic zones. But what happens is uh, some agroclimatic zones of Andhra Pradesh or some other, uh, they have overlap. Like dry zones, there will be a common uh, species distribution. So there won't be a much uh, difference actually. If you are in a dry zone, prosophis is growing. Even in Andhra also, you can suggest prosophis, acacia. So that uh, in that way, we have selected three broad agroclimatic zones. So we have a big coastline, Karnataka. So most of the uh, stretch on the west side we is a coastline. So here there is a demand of different type of species. Actually, we cannot uh, suggest uh, species which we suggest for uh, Balari, Raichur, or Tumkur. We cannot suggest the same species to South Canada, uh, Shumoga, all those places. We cannot suggest. So there will be a different type of species uh, preferred there. See, as I told, farmers are shifting from traditional agriculture to livestock farming. This is a major uh, change what is happening because of the, uh, there is no guaranteed uh, income out of agriculture. Over the years, we are seeing there is change in uh, rain patterns all those things and there's a lot of uh, crop failures. So people are trying to have the alternate uh, source of income. So they're shifting towards livestock farming and livestock farming has increased manifold actually. Uh, just 10 years back, if you see from agriculture to livestock farming, there is a drastic shift. So this is just a, I'm giving a view of land use pattern. So forest it is 16.1 percent, even though compared to the other 54 percent that is land use, but uh, forests also play. That is also a big ecosystem, no? Because all your fodder uh, resources are from forests only, outside forest and the forest. So forests are a big source of uh, fodders, especially for the livestock, uh, which are around the fringe areas. 
because even forest dwellers are also are a countable uh, amount people reside in the villages also and they have an, 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 an average uh, household in the fringe forest they'll have at least uh, two to three cows or buffaloes and some 10 to 15 sheep or goats they'll have on an average so as you can see the permanent pastures and other grasslands grazing lands also see over the years it is decreasing like uh, every uh, village or something like that if you just remember we used to have a separate dedicated grassland pasture land because that was a dedicated grassland there there used to be no uh, having any development work or there is no construction or something like that it is purely a grassland where it is a pasture land every village used to have all across india we have that uh, system we have a pasture land but that is decreasing again so there is no dedicated pasture land also now so that is also one of the reason why the grazing into the forest areas is been increasing because there is dwindling uh, pasture lands dedicated grasslands also and pasture land community pasture land what is called as <clears throat> so as i told karnataka is divided into 10 uh, agroclimatic zones so most of them are overlapping uh, they'll have similar uh, type of agroclimatic uh, zones with slight difference in the rainfall rainfall and soil characteristics other than that there will be not uh, much differences when you compare to the species distribution but uh, based on the cropping pattern the agroclimatic zones have been divided into 10 so if you compare to the first one that is northeastern transition to the coastal line they, that is a big uh, different uh, comparison this coastal line has a different type of climate soil characteristics and vegetation also and when you compare to the Beaver region, which is almost arid region, and the species composition is different, and uh, the need of forest, uh, the forest area is also very minimum there. And then compared to coastal area, where is there is a good amount of forest area, and now when you compare, there will be uh, always the inverse proportion. See, since it is forest area here, the grazing uh, will be more here forest area and need for for uh, fodder species stored fodder species will be less because people will not depend on storing because availability but be there though there is less forest area but fodder species are needed whatever plantation is done either by social forestry or something like that it will be grazed by livestock only because there, that is the availability so there should be an alternative there also so in the both ways if you think here also you need a check because forest lands are been damaged there also you need a check why because all social forestry plantations will be targeted by the livestock so that will be eaten up social forestry what they do there even though if it, there, no, there is no natural forest whatever social forestry plantation is done that will be eaten up that will vanish so that green area what uh, you try to establish will be vanishing every year because livestock eat up so there also you need a strategy but different type of strategy has to be developed for this coastal area and then the arid area. So in our project, what we have done is we have chosen three different climatic zones. One is almost minimum or almost low rainfall, average rainfall like Bangalore area. So Bangalore, Kolar, Tumkur, these gets a very minimum type of rainfall. And the transition zone we have taken it as at Darwad. So that is the transition zone. Then the other zone we have taken it as a uh, high rainfall area Shumoga, because there you get uh, maximum rainfall and the species uh, preference is also different there so we have chosen three different locations that is one is bangalore and then the other one is uh, at darwad and the other one is at Shumoga. So these are the designated uh, areas where the choice of species also has been given so fodder crops uh, suggested so you can just see northeastern transition zone that is the total arid zone it is uh, Beaver and gulbarga come under that where there is choice of species you can just see there the grass species are very different compared to there because they know don't need much of uh, water there that, Dianthus grass is one species, 
which needs very minimum water. Uh, this is out of my experience only because this is a first hand experience for me also because uh, this uh, fodder species is a new project to me also. Over my experience with contacting people in the different areas where they are working, out of this two years experience, I am just telling that because I have seen this uh, grasses growing in the uh, their demonstration plots, this dianthus grows with a minimum water. So this can be suggested in dry areas also. Then rose grass also. These two grasses are the common grasses grown in dry region. Lucerne is one species which has high protein content. Lucerne and needs minimum management actually. So you should always suggest a species which has minimum management and minimum water need in the dry zones because there it is very difficult to uh, manage crop with uh, irrigation, all those things. So the species there suggested should be of this type. That's the uh, dianthus and rhodes are the two grass species which very well suit for these dry areas. And uh, even the uh, all round year, you can harvest the crop. And their propagation is also very easy. They are propagated by uh, uh, slips. Grasses, just uh, with a single slip, you can propagate. The material is easily available and propagated very easily. See, then coming to this uh, coastal zone or high rainfall area, these are the type of species we have suggested there. Stylosanthus is also another grass. But uh, this grass grows and it is a spreading type. And once you plant, you get a huge area of uh, grass spread for a long time and it can be harvested once in uh, once in a month, two months, you can harvest and there is a good yield of uh, fodder every two months. So this, as I told, we have selected three different sites uh, over uh, this project once uh, when it was uh, started. We had to think over how to get into this project uh, literally. So there should be some scientific uh, base or reason to say this species has to be given to this uh, type of agroclimatic zone or this type of agroclimatic zone needs this type of uh, intervention. So based on that, we had interaction with uh, IGFRI, that is uh, Indian Grassland Fodder Research Institute, which is based at Jansi, and then they have one uh, regional center at Darwad also. So scientists there they helped us in uh, deciding about the sites, which type of sites has to be selected. So based on their uh, knowledge and our intervention also, we selected three sites. One is at uh, Bangalore. In Bangalore, at Esargata, we have one uh, from Ministry of Animal, Animal Husbandry. They have one central fodder seed production center. So there they have uh, people who are experts in this and they have uh, seed bank also. So they distribute seeds for the farmers uh, all over Karnataka. So we uh, requested them and we took uh, land of one hectare there and we started our experiments there. And then IGFRA Regional Center Darwad, that is a regional center, they have very established uh, campus over there. And uh, one scientist, uh, Dr. Shiv Kumar, he is uh, helping us with all these uh, experiments to uh, conduct experiments at their campus, Darwad. Then Shumaga Agriculture University, this is and fall area. We selected uh, land uh, here. They have also given one hectare land and uh, we have already established uh, nurseries in all these areas and we have been uh, layouting and we will be planting uh, in this uh, season. So you can see that in uh, Darwad, the suggestion of uh, grass species uh, is of totally different uh, type and uh, tree species also. Uh, they are suggesting uh, morus, that is uh, mulberry leaves. So that is easily palatable by even uh, cows, buffaloes eat, sheep also eat. So that's why it's a very common species where all the three types of livestock uh, eat on that. Then sesbenia also, sesbenia livestock. Demonstration also, they, what they have done is, uh, we requested them because uh, once uh, after five years, who is going to manage this? That is also was a question. So that's why we didn't select a land, which is afterwards, uh, who is going to manage if there is no funds. That's why we selected such a type of uh, uh, organizations, 
where they'll they'll manage these lands after five years of our project. This will be a demonstration land, and we have already written to them on farm trail, on trail also. Once because we are planting tree species also. After five years, they will manage, and it will be a demonstration plot also for them. Because right now, uh, only uh, IGFRI uh, Tharwad has demonstration plot for grasses. They don't have demonstration for tree, tree species. So we requested because we are uh, giving them budget also. We just told them uh, make it as a demonstration uh, plot also, so that uh, on writing in the MOU we have written uh, to the director IGFRI. No, no, we are, we are, we have to establish. We have already layout have been done, and we have to establish. So director has uh, approved. IGFRA director has approved that it will be maintained as demonstration land, or uh, demonstration plot after uh, the project is over five years. So same thing uh, even in Esergata also. Esergata, since it is a fodder uh, seed production center, they don't have a demonstration plot. So what uh, we requested uh, to the director there. So once we establish this as after five years, you can have this as a demonstration plot so that uh, farmers come and visit there. So they don't have a established demonstration plot. So this can be used as demonstration plot because the area is a huge area. It is actually almost we are establishing. We are request requested for one hectare area, but experiments, there are three experiments spread over one acre area. So one acre area also is a big area to manage. So after our five years project it is really difficult to manage uh, this area. Ah. Three demonstration plots will be coming. Uh, the harvesting will be after six months, but this uh, season we are going to establish the demonstration plot. So similarly, University of Agriculture Science uh, and uh, Horticulture Science, Shumoga, they also don't have a dedicated uh, fodder uh, plot, but uh, in their curriculum they have this uh, fodder as one of the syllabus. But they don't have anything to show as a established plot. So that's why we choose universities because universities. What happens is that their land uh, it is always uh, safe for us because there will be some type of management. Because in farmers' land we cannot uh, ensure that uh, they they will carry out the carry over these uh, experiments or uh, they'll keep the species after our experiments are over. So that's why we choose these three different areas. So where it is, uh, at least we are assured that these experiments will be there for demonstration in future. Uh, this is just the monsoon, uh, how it is uh, in Karnataka. So all this is the southwest monsoon we get, but uh, pre-monsoon and northwest monsoon, it is uh, of a very different type and the crops also of different type in our uh, state. So this is just the fodder vulnerability that is, uh, is there availability of fodder or there is a lot of demand for fodder. See, we, uh, the districts like uh, Haveri, Gadag, Opal, all these places, they are less vulnerable. The reason behind this, they have good agriculture system they established there. So every year they have a uh, crop. So the crop residues are used as fodder. So they don't have problem with the uh, fodder. That is to some extent, but it is not guaranteed. If rain fails, there is again, there are chances of fodder uh, scarcity. And when you compare to the other uh, districts like coastal regions, Uttar Kannada, Udupi, Dakshin Kannada, you see highly vulnerability because of the forest area. There is no system of uh, having crop uh, species because they are all, uh, their agriculture system is paddy based. So paddy straw is the only thing and paddy straw, it is fed by only uh, cows or buffaloes. The other livestock doesn't prefer that much. So they need green manure. So what is the source of green manure? Uh, sorry, green uh, fodder is again, it will uh, be dependent on the forest area only. So the forest areas in these regions are vulnerable. So moderately vulnerable area, you can see like Tumkur, all those dishes, because this is this this areas you can see somewhere they have this horticulture based uh, uh, system also. So what happens is like Tumkur, if you see it is coconut uh, preferred. So most of the time the coconut and they have uh, ragi or uh, some other cro crops uh, as a short rotation crop. So there also fodder 
uh, scarcity will be there in the lean period. See that is 35,000 hectares area under fodder crops. That is hectare under permanent pastures, but permanent pastures are there, but unmanaged permanent pastures, but uh, they are also encroached. Permanent pastures also encroach and they, they are not available for the livestock for grazing. See some of the districts like Ballari, Chikmanglu, Chitradurga, this uh, dry chur, Shumoga, practically negligible fodder green area. Because of this arid uh, condition in uh, Ballari, Chitradurga, Gadag, Raichur, all these areas, there is dry region, so there is no green pasture. Unlike Shumoga and other places, why there is a uh, uh, deficit of this uh, fodder area? Because there is agriculture based. Most of the lands are agriculture based. There is a uh, scarcity of land for agriculture itself. So all the land is utilized. There is no fallow land. So most of the land is agriculture based, paddy land. So that is the two different uh, why there is a, a scarcity of green fodder there in those districts. Although it is a high rainfall area, there is deficit in green fodder because of that uh, agriculture pattern. In Raichur, Balari, because it is dry area, green fodder is not available there. That is the reason. This urbanization is one of the reasons that is a well known uh, fact. So to have fodder security, we have to have some of the established uh, uh, points. That is, one is planting material availability because whenever we need planting material, that is a source we don't know or where it is available, we don't know. Seeds. And even if you get uh, seeds also, we are not sure about the uh, germination and uh, how good the seeds are. So a good uh, source of seed and availability is also the need. So those are some of the names whom uh, while interaction I have seen. These people are very enterprising actually. These people, they are actually uh, established very good uh, seed, uh, fodder seed banks actually. They are supplying seeds to uh, farmers whenever there is a need and they are good at uh, collection, processing and they are storing the seeds also for uh, future uh, dissemination or uh, whenever the farmers or stakeholders, they ask for the seeds, they are ready to spare with the seeds. They have good knowledge about that. We interacted with some of the people. So we could uh, get uh, quite good information about what is the scenario of uh, fodder uh, seed production in this type of uh, dry areas. Like Ballari and all, we have seen these people, they are uh, good at, in the season they collect and store the fodder species seeds and they, whenever there is need, they are selling it to the farmers with a minimum price. There is not selling with the exorbitant price or when there is lean period, people generally what they do, they shoot up the price and they sell. But we have seen that they are giving out uh, seeds also to the farmers in a reasonable price, these people. So out of all the species what we had listed in the project, these are the species which we have uh, chosen for uh, Karnataka with the three climatic zones. That is the uh, mulberry for all our uh, areas like uh, arid uh, areas like Kolar, <coughs> then uh, Bangalore, all these areas with minimum uh, rain also, they survive. Even they stand good moisture level also. Even if it is heavy rain also, they stand up. They don't uh, uh, die off because of uh, water logging also. So they are uh, good at that. So even if it is a minimum uh, rainfall also, they come out very well, this. And they have good uh, green fodder yield also, mulberry. Drumstick we are suggesting only because it is again, it is a multi-income uh, crop. So either as a fodder 
or even if the fruits even now you see the leaf also leaf powder is also used as the protein supplement leaf powder is used as the protein supplement and fruit seed powder is used as a coagulant now this uh, drumstick seed powder what they are doing it is used as a water purifier or something like that they use it as coagulant for water so it is a multi use uh, tree species and uh, easy maintenance uh, plant Dr drumstick once you plant there are different varieties of plants developed by Tamil Nadu Agriculture University also they have developed a few varieties they are very good yielders and generally what happens traditional uh, moringa tree yields only once in a year so some variety like odc and uh, pkm and all you see that they yield twice in a year um, so three years before she just joined the scientist b so there is a good uh, madam time income also the income from the only so ah yes sir you can me uh, what you get the seed meal also can be manure also one of the and then uh, the leaf it can fodder madam got selected drumstick leaves mine I don't believe it. I am not aware of it. This we are not given that. Uh, that idea has not come from us no no it's not part of my project and idea is also not from us <laughs> because this information is also because wine again needs uh, some palatability yeah. and uh, leaves uh, of moringa we know that how it is so i don't know wine uh, and whose idea also we don't know sir for my wine making but his point is uh, leaves sir fruits no idea but fruit uh, seed powder they are using it as uh, natural uh, uh, coagulant they are using it and it's a good industry now people are uh, growing uh, the pods are sold at a high price also they the dry powder 1 kg dry powder they are selling it around uh, 150 rupees uh, 200 rupees per kg dry seed powder then sesbenia is a good uh, uh, tree species and it's an evergreen uh, tree species and uh, all around here you have a good uh, foliage also and that forms and protein content is very high in this the leaves pods also so that uh, goes as a good fodder for the livestock melia melia as a both uh, timber species and fodder species leaves like uh, neem because it belongs to the same uh, family uh melia also is uh, palatable by uh, goats goats they eat uh, easily melia uh there is little rest restriction by cows cows and buffaloes they don't uh, eat uh, uh, melia leaves but uh, goats they eat goats are fed with uh, uh, even neem leaves also they are fed and uh, melia also i'll show you this uh, hedge uh, lucerne desmanthus ericus because some of the species this species this species is common species you people would have seen this hedge lucerne it's a very short and shrub type but the full uh, once you cut or uh, prune it you see that within 15 days you get the lush again and because this is a papilionaceous member again you see that pods and leaves have good protein content highly proteinaceous and it is uh, easily Uh, goats cows also prefer if you just uh, even stall feeding also if you just cut the stall feed them when you have lucerne with other uh, grass species they prefer eating the easy eating this because it's uh, very palatable and uh, nutrition nutritive also subabal is a common species it's a very traditional uh, fodder species which was introduced for uh, the purpose Lucerne leucocephala was introduced as fodder species only for all this uh, any dry zone, dry zone, all these things. 
because the lucerne and lucerne it gives very good uh, foliage and uh, for uh, as a fodder species it is recommended even glaricidia also was introduced for fodder only so glaricidia uh, again it is a highly proteinaceous leaves and uh, it is an evergreen and has a good uh, foliage Ailanthus excelsa is also a good uh, fodder species because in the coastal areas you see Ailanthus excelsa comes out very well uh, unlike uh, our plains Ailanthus excelsa we don't see uh, more trees Ailanthus excelsa or Ailanthus malabarica the both the species they are almost coastal area species they come out very well and livestock over there they prefer this Albizia it's again uh, it's a normal dry zone moisture wherever it is it's a good uh, tree species and again, all the most of the species you see, they are all uh, Fabaceous species, and that is rich in protein, because their seed storage or leaf is rich in protein. Even drumstick also is rich in protein. So all fodder species, the main content is the protein. So that uh, milk yield and meat yield, both are dependent on the uh, pro uh, content of protein in the fodder. So in Karnataka, actually, we have one central uh, silk uh, technology research institute in Bangalore. They have come out with these three varieties. That is uh, Kanva 2, S13 and S34 varieties. That is with the R interaction while selecting uh, which species to propagate in all the places. So they suggested us with these three species. So they are having a good yield and uh, harvesting time is also uh, very short uh, harvesting time. So these three species they have suggested. This Kanva two we are suggesting for our uh, Bangalore area, and the other two we are suggesting for the Shumoga and then Dharwad area. That's just uh, uh, detail about that uh, spacing. Generally, even a close spacing also. Generally, you would have seen mulberry how it is uh, uh, grown. Very close spacing, 90 centimeters. Also, it will come out very well. This is palatable by both cattle, sheep, goats, all eat this. So even some people here in Kanakpura area under we have seen, we have, during our survey we have seen this Kanakpura and this uh, Mandya area because uh, this mulberry actually earlier it was grown for silk rearing. Now that silk rearing has dwindled down, it has come down and people are having this plantation, they are doing it and they are uh, also having silk rearing to some extent. But what uh, material they get from here goes most of the things goes waste because uh, silkworms for them, uh, the leaves which are fed are of different type. They, they should be young leaves. So all these old leaves are going waste, but they have made an income out of that also with that. Uh, this economics was given by this uh, institute only. So every farmer with this uh, plantation of one acre, they are making around 50,000 by selling this uh, as fodder for uh, sheep and cattle. Drumstick also, during our survey we have seen, lot of plantations also have come with very close uh, spacing also they have planted. And uh, this is uh, actually uh, one variety ODC, what we have seen. Uh, this is having the yield of this type. And the plant, uh, the, the tree grows maximum to four feet so and it has good yield spreading is also good and foliage also and it yields twice in a year so both it provides good economy even after uh, selling the fruits pods you get an income as a fodder species also you can recommend sesbenia also sesbenia most of the fields we have seen there is no dedicated uh, block plantation but we have seen they have planted in the bund and uh, very close pl planting also they have done maybe five feet five feet they have planted we have seen this plantation in uh, mandia mysore and uh, even kanakpur also we have seen on the buns they have planted that is for fodder only again it is uh, fodder and sometimes people uh, eat this uh, uh, pods also it uh, almost tastes like our uh, bean it is a vegetable also. I have seen people preparing vegetable also with this uh, thing in that area. So they eat that uh, pods also. It almost tastes like uh, bean.
this melia so melia it's a good uh, option for fodder because now uh, since uh, farmers are taking this as a plantation so there is uh, enough green uh, fodder available so which goes waste when you harvest or something like that or every year when it because you can see this might be around this uh, uh, plant may be around uh, one year or one and a half years old but you see the foliage also it is giving a good amount of foliage so by fourth year fifth year you will have a good amount of foliage so that can go as a fodder i other than use as this is a plywood species so the fodder uh, leaf can be a good fodder for the livestock neem though there is no dedicated plantation done in uh, karnataka but uh, uh, you can see social forestry especially forest department has done in social forestry all roadside plantation in the regions like uh, dry areas raichur gulbarga ballari up to bidar you can see all this roadside uh, plantation social forestry is neem so this is a good fodder for uh, livestock especially goats because these dry areas their uh, economy is based on sheep and goat rearing so they depend on this uh, fodder and uh, they prefer also they eat uh, it's highly palatable and uh, good fodder uh, fodder for sheep especially sheep and goats they eat subabul has also introduced as a fodder species but uh, later because of it is uh, invasive nature so people started restricting it but otherwise with a management in a fallow land where the land is fallow or in a degraded land you can just have this plantation because the you get a good foliage but only the menace is with the seeds because you cannot control the germinal regeneration and if it spreads it is very difficult to manage that is the only reason in forest department they are uh, uh, apprehensive about uh, having this species but we can have it in a fallow land glycidity also was introduced as a fodder species but uh, it uh, uh, gained uh, importance uh, as a fodder species when other fodder species were more palatable now people are not uh, planting this Uh, though planting is very easy even a small cutting you just just cut a stem cutting and you just plant it it will uh, regenerate but only problem is again it is a menace glycidia seed uh, once it pods start uh, dispersing management is a difficult thing but only if it is managed it's a very good fodder species and it is preferred in some regions glycidia is preferred but uh, only because forest department cannot uh, manage it is very difficult to manage them in the forest area so they don't uh, like it but it can be planted in a fallow land wasteland it is can be a good uh, fodder species this ailanthus excelsa ailanthus malabarica is a species of coastal region so there they prefer this uh, plant for uh, cattle feeding also even cattle also feed on this in coastal region there is uh, less of uh, sheep and goat rearing compared to our dry zone but uh, they have good amount of livestock uh, cows especially uh, that uh, what do you call it as a desi breeds what they have but uh, desi breeds they don't uh, eat on anything they always prefer the local uh, vegetation desi breeds unlike the other cows you stall feed them they eat these are all the experiences what i have seen while uh, if you go to a dairy farming the, the you stall feed the breeds they feed but the, all these desi feeds you stall feed them they don't feed on that they always prefer the vegetation local vegetation they uh, prefer so these are good uh, source of fodder in the coastal area this is albizia this is also one of the good uh, fodder species pods are very nutritive and the young pods are very palatable even uh, cows also eat on this sheep goats they eat on this so those are the about the tree species some of the tree species uh, some 10 species i just highlighted some of the grass species of our different agroclimatic zones so these are the species from animal husbandry department government of india they have recommended uh, these species for uh, fodder 
in uh, India across different uh, states, the in different states region wise they have around uh, seven uh, regional centers. One is at Esergata, Bangalore, animal husbandry. So Karnataka, they are suggesting all these uh, species for different agroclimatic zones. There is Napier and hybrid Napier. Only difference is the growth. This grows tall Napier grass, hybrid Napier. The local uh, Napier grass, it is a spreading type and it is uh, clump forming type. But this has good uh, uh, green uh, fodder and harvestable every two months, this one. Guinea grass, this is also spreading type grass and highly palatable by cows and buffaloes. Sheep also eat, but cows and buffaloes prepare where stall feeding is done. This green manure, this napier grass and this uh, guinea grass is preferred by cows. This is a stylosanthus spreading type and it spreads over and it's a good uh, soil binder also this uh, uh, grass. And uh, the advantage of this is you need not manage it or it is not uh, invasive type because the seeds produce what happens, it grows there itself. It is not uh, airborne. So it is not carried by air and it doesn't spread. So what happens is if you plant it in uh, a 10 by 10 plot, maximum it will spread it to another two feet or three feet. That's the only uh, thing and advantage of this. Otherwise grasses, what happens generally, they are very invasive and they spread. Sorghum, as you people all know, is a crop preferred by livestock as a green manure. And there are many varieties which have come out of, by ICR institutes also. They have brought out different varieties, both for cobs and both for green manure. There is a different varieties for uh, green manure, uh, sorry, uh, green fodder, and then species uh, varieties for cobs also. Maize like chowar, maize is also one of the preferred uh, uh, fodder. Kaupi. In dryland, what happens during uh, rainy uh, rains? When the onset of rains, na, generally if you cannot cultivate any other crop, before rains, they try to grow this cowpea. They just broadcast the seed and they just uh, leave it. If they grow well, pods are harvested. Otherwise, it is fed because it is a uh, papillonous member, protein rich, and uh, it's a good uh, fodder also for the animals. This is the Rhodes grass, which is an introduced grass species and uh, highly palatable by buffaloes because this species are, is more uh, grown in uh, northern part of India, Ariana, all those places uh, in the buns. Here in uh, Karnataka, this species is mostly grown in the areas like Balari, Bij Bijapur, then uh, Davangere, then Chitradurg also we have seen this grass. But uh, this grass is not preferred here in uh, Bangalore and then Shumag, all those places, this grass is not much preferred. This is also an introduced species. The same characteristics of what like uh, Rhodes grass. This also is a good uh, palatable and uh, it is preferred for stall feeding by both the buffaloes and cows and also even uh, sheep and goats also they eat on stall feeding. This is Medicago sativa, Lucerne, and easily propagatable uh, plant species, and it is also used as green manure also. People sow it before the pods come out, they plow it or they graze also, because it's easily manageable and it needs less of water and a good amount of green fodder you get out of this. These are some of the organizations which are uh, dealing with this uh, fodder research and uh, seed production. One is Central Fodder uh, Seed Production Farm, Esergata, what I told. That is uh, based at uh, Bangalore. It is catering needs of uh, the three states of Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, uh, 
Karnataka and uh, Kerala. They provide seeds and they have good uh, seed bank storage. They have harvest the seeds and they store the seeds process and they sell the seeds also on request. National Seeds Corporation is a central government organization. They have uh, limited uh, seed species and uh, they sell tree seeds spe for the species also they have. Uh, on, uh, This is uh, based in Bangalore. Also, we have one uh, center at Hebal National Seeds Corporation. Then, uh, other than that, Karnataka Seeds Seed Corporation adjacent to this building only, there is Karnataka Seeds Seed Corporation also. This also has good uh, amount of uh, grass species because these are all the places where we visited and we collected information for uh, availability of uh, uh, seeds. Then Milk Federation also, they have established their own uh, uh, fodder uh, storage uh, sills. Why? Because in lean period, they want uh, fodder. So what they have done is this Milk Federations also, they have formed their own uh, uh, organizations and they have pulled up uh, fodder collected and they are stored. In the lean period, they use the, the fodder which has been stored. This is our cooperative uh, Milk federations where they have their own uh, uh, fodder storage uh, facilities. These are some of the problems which has to be addressed for this uh, fodder uh, scarcity or uh, species. That is decreasing size of agricultural land holdings and uh, disorder location of land to fodder crop production because livestock number is increasing, the fodder production area is limited. So there is no balance between that. So rain is again, there is a change in monsoon patterns also and the crop patterns have changed. And uh, so even fodder also, the dry fodder material is decreasing. So there is pressure on the forest again. When there is a dry matter uh, scarcity, so stall feeding cannot be done. So the grazing is done in the forest area. Droughts, cyclones, they're all na natural calamities which cannot be avoided. So for this, the second objective of our project takes care of that, the nutritive value and storage also, uh, how we can store the crop for use in the lean period. Over dependence on natural disasters that the forest, ultimately forests are the target where Animals are just left to graze. There are some of the points which uh, we had uh, talks with uh, organizations like IGNF, IGFRI, and then uh, seed uh, for fodder uh, uh, production station also. And these were the general points what they were telling that these are the points which has to be addressed the fodder crops in existing cropping system. So they should be in bunds also, how they introduce the uh, fodder species so that there is management in the lean period, there is green manure available for the livestock. So other than crop species, we should also have alternate growing of these fodder species so that there should not be a scarcity in the lean period. In different uh, combinations, cropping cell, there is RT pastoral, sylvie pastoral, wherever it exists like we should uh, try to manage the uh, species, either a grass or a tree species. As I told, Agasthi is grown on the buns to manage the uh, uh, fodder <coughs> need. So once you use efficiently the crop residue as the fodder, so then there will be no pressure on natural uh, forest or green uh, fodder feeding. So if you don't manage, General problem with the management of uh, dry material is fungal attack. So what happens because it is not dried properly or moisture content, it gets spoiled. So animals will not eat on the uh, materials which are infested. Once you have a fungal infection or something like that, animals they don't uh, just eat on that uh, dry matter also. Even if you stall feed, they don't eat. In the project we have just um, highlighted, 
all over uh, India, Pan India. This identified areas for propagating for production. That is what we suggest after this project. They are planning to suggest the fallow lands where it has to be uh, planted and what type of species has to be planted. In the fringe forest area, what type of tree species has to be planted? If grasses has to be introduced, what care has to be taken? So it should not be an invasive again. If grasses are invest, uh, suggested, then selection of villages in different agroclimatic zones. So the, that is demonstration, but it is a very difficult task having uh, villages as demonstration uh, plots. So that's why we selected uh, institutions as demonstration plot because villages, wherever we establish, we are not guaranteed because they also need resources. Na? Once you don't give resources, they will not be able to manage things because organizations, they have uh, regular funds so that what they'll do is they'll at least manage the uh, plots. Package of practices are almost lacking for many tree species. Grass species, they have package of practices, but uh, for tree species, the uh, package of practices is lacking. So this is what we thought of having the trainings uh, for people taking to different organizations. IGFRI is one place which is dedicated for fodder research. Then NINP is in Bangalore based ICR Institute. It is National Institute of Animal Nutrition and Physiology. NDRI is National Dairy Research Institute. This is based at Karnal, but we have a regional office at Bangalore. Then all state agriculture universities and state veterinary universities are the main stakeholders. That's what all demonstration plots, what we are planning, it will have effect on the stakeholders. They definitely get to know what are the species can be grown. At one place, they can see that these are the species which can be grown in our farmland or to cater our fodder need. These are all what all uh, partnership we have done that is at ICFRE level to have uh, our research to go on uh, in a uh, as per action plan, how it has to be taken forward because we don't have expertise in many of the fields. So these are the action plan uh, organizations which we were linked so that we'll have expertise from them also. So these are the agencies involved. ICR as we already we have uh, MOU with them. That's not a problem. So main uh, our partner will be IGFRI because that is a national institute dedicated for fodder research institute, uh, fodder research uh, activities. And uh, we are in constant touch with those people for all the package of practices, seed availability and experiments also what we are conducting. We are consulting them and we are doing it. Thank you for bearing me. Definitely. Tree species silage, it is a little difficult, I feel. Grass species, it's uh, grass species is possible. Tree species, little day, it'll be uh, practically it is difficult silage preparation with uh, tree species because uh, again uh, it is not a continuous flow na? Uh, the harvest also it will be done in a particular period silage preparation it depends because uh, again individual uh, preference it is uh, whether uh, uh, this region prefers doing it this way or animals prefer all those things come into the but grasses there is not uh, not a problem so silage preparation it won't be a problem with grasses tree species it has, be, it has to be worked out again
definitely yeah. what you tell is right because uh, what species what you are referring to is tapioca it's a u4 base member again so all u4 base member you know it is a latex uh, and uh, that is a defense mechanism actually developed by plants so that animals won't feed on that got it so tapioca is again region based because tapioca is uh, farming is done in kerala but uh, i don't think uh, in karnataka all those things we grow tapioca to that extent what you grow in kerala and again what you said the leaves boiling and then feeding na that itself is a energy consuming na so that itself energy consuming and people may not prefer only because in kerala that is available in huge quantity they prefer it but even if you suggest in karnataka that uh, tapioca what happens is we have another alternative for it na so they mean for kerala i am not sure again boiling hmm. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. That's why you see all these amaranthus members, animals also they eat in only less quantity. They don't feed in more quantity. All amaranthus members because they contain all saponi saponins. What it? Because what happens? That will uh, cause uh, stomach uh, irritation, mm -hmm. and they'll have loose uh, stools. Animals, so they don't prefer eating amaranthus members. With my general experience, I am telling. Okay, I am an anti member because of that uh, bluey nature. Our anti C. Otherwise, whatever crop we grow in the land, uh, crop system, na by irrigation, those our anti C. They don't have this type of problem. This is again a defense mechanism. When you go into a fallow land and growing, there it's a defense mechanism. The concentrates are there, so they don't prefer. They eat very less. But if you see. wherever they grow this amaranthus is leafy vegetable na you just leave a cow within fraction of uh, minute it will eat up everything and come out so that is only a preference again hello hello that is true stall feeding actually animals will not at all eat whatever you give just we'll tell that we'll just dump in front of them but uh, you and i have seen with the, all this uh, experience we have visited this uh, farms and all no they have shown us stall feeding also how animals do how, how their preference is because uh, whenever something is available there no even if you are putting this in front of you they don't prefer this they simply go and eat the other things whenever it is not available stall feeding is done even at stall feeding also if it is not palatable they don't eat that is 100% sure stall feeding they won't do if that's why stall feeding has to be done only with uh, uh, tree species or forest species having nutritive value and palatability is also is important test for that most of uh, most of this are what she was suggesting because we don't have any amaranthus members in this uh, because we know that it will not uh, eat uh, I, except goat cows and buffaloes cows are very sensitive compared to buffaloes cows are very sensitive and very selective they will not at all eat even if they starve also they don't eat uh, on stall feeding whatever you give buffaloes eat sometimes goats eat but cows are very very uh, specific and they don't stall feed whatever they give you give they always try to feed uh, green feeding stall feeding only with uh, rice straw that to have good quality otherwise even ragi straw also they don't eat only desi breeds eat if you go to all these breeds na they don't stall feed so easily with the dried matter these are all with the experience what i have gained in two years visiting all this uh, organizations and farms na this is what uh, because my expertise is different it is all with uh, my experience what i have done in two years visiting all these places i am just telling you people that's shumaga is little uh, slopey what grass that's what the experiment three experiments we have there one is only grass species trees and grasses and one one individual uh, tree species with uh, very uh, dense spacing we have trying one uh, experiment with a one tree species with dense spacing and harvesting in two uh, intervals that is one is 6 month and one is one year so what is the nutritive value and what is the yield of uh, green fodder that is one experiment 
the other experiment uh, purely grasses we have and the other one is grass and uh, tree species intercropping we have so how many questions are there they prevent I'm not sure about this grass species. Now, grass species uh, generally, what happens? Fibrous root system. erosion permitting because grasses they actually recommend to prevent uh, erosion by and large taproot system tree species where you plant in a slope Okay, tree species have a taproot system. Their fibrous root system is very not much extends compared to monocots. The grasses are monocots. Now the fibrous root system, they are actually with their net forming. Okay, generally you just take uh, the case of your lawn. Okay, your lawn there is no soil erosion because the system what happens the soil is bound like this. A slope. Maybe Salomon because of runoff. Maybe because of runoff. Maybe. That type of slope you don't have. Uh, comes under transition zone and the land which we have selected there what they have given is not having that type of uh, percentage of slope there. Maybe in farmland it happens. Why? Because I tell in the farmland it happens. Maybe farmland. Why? Because you have a you made you have made a slope maximum slope like this in the farmland. Okay, in the hilly region you see the slope won't be like this. It will be actually a tapering slope. Okay, the grass is actually prevent. If you see any with my experience also while I've been traveling towards Kerala or something like that hills, you have seen this uh, lemon grass how it has grown. Okay, that actually prevents uh, uh, prevents uh, soil erosion. Actually, yeah. runoff, you know, there is cut off because grass. You try to pick up uh, a bunch of grass from the soil. It's not that easy to pick up a bunch of uh, grass because it will have fibrous root extensively. So it will spread. Maybe your version, what you are telling, it is uh, true with the agricultural land on the bunch where they have made a slope. slope. Uh. Even in hills also. If you go to any hills, you see where there is a good amount of grass. Na? Enough of water is there, uh, but soil erosion is not much.
maybe maybe because we have not seen anyway i will see that because i have not seen that time that is the in himalayas they form that uh, terrace forming is a uh, common uh, because of land scarcity and they want to conserve water also because runoff water should be stored na, so they make that contour forming so grasses uh, to my knowledge okay i'll just go maybe Older. Because always trees and the ground flora always they reduce soil erosion. Ground flora is very important. They reduce the soil erosion because runoff water they stop it because their uh, uh, root architecture is very different. Unlike trees, na, they have very good tap root system, very weak fibrous root system. But all herbaceous they have very good uh, fibrous root system and they interlock. So that is the being a botany person. That is my perception of idea. Maybe what you tell also is my might be right. Ah, that's what. Maybe because uh, what you tell is also right. Grass species, their protein content is very different compared to this also. Maybe there will be a fodder species preference also changes because grass and then you have a continuous flow of fodder also. You can grow a leguminacea also and grass also. That's what is done in the second experiment actually. We have that uh, tree species and grass species in an intercrop. We have experiment. What is the yield? And we have harvest period one six six months. Grasses every two months once we have harvest there. In case of plain, but we have not planned any experiment because we don't have that type of uh, things here, na. So maybe in some other place uh, they would have done that. What IFGTV has done with this project, I am not sure about that. Hello, Mr. Venkatesh. Yes, sir. Ah, please. I have a small question regarding uh, Caliandra calothrisus. What is the fodder value? Ah, yes. Please. Because uh, I'm not sure about that. Because that species we have not studied, Caliandra, I'll let you know because uh, we are not dedicated uh, fodder research institute now because Caliandra, I'm not sure about because even in our project, we don't have Caliandra so that uh, uh, we don't know about that uh, things. I'll update you. You can just contact me after two days. I'll let you know. I'll, I'll put across uh, people who are uh, working in this uh, fodder. Na? I'll put across uh, those people so that you can have uh, information from them. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you. Okay, welcome. Sir, that is because again, menace, sir. Pericidia, once it fruits, na, it will germinate very uh, huge level. Maybe it is having one compound also, which is not uh, suggested for milk production. That's why livestock, uh, cows especially, they are not fed with uh, uh, clericidia because of that uh, thing. Some leukocyte or something like that they have, which is not good for that uh, uh, milk uh, production. And milk also is not healthy. That's what uh, in the report they are telling. 
that's why plasticidia is uh, not recommended but uh, other livestock they are growing whenever nothing is available plasticidia they are feeding but uh, that apprehension is there plasticidia because of some leucocide that effect uh, uh, milk production also and milk quality also that's why they are not uh, suggesting that Lucen also same same issue Lucen also ah next day what she told na because of the leucocide only they dump it in water uh, and then uh, feed it that is about to leach out that leucocide Ah, Lucena was big. All dry areas, all dry areas. Ah, Lucena came out very well and easily to propagate. Na, you just see next this uh, season it uh, fruits. Next rainy season it spreads like anything. Ah, that it caused that because of the leukocyte. Ah, all FABC members, that is another uh, problem. Swollen. But that is because of leukocytes only. All FABC members, they have that problem, the leukocyte content. That's why what we do, even uh, you see all other vegetables other than FABC members, we eat raw. But leuco FABC members, we don't eat raw. Because beans also, we don't eat raw because we cook and eat only because we have to reach out that leukocytes. That's the reason even bean also stored. They have to be cooked for a long time. Otherwise, it will not taste good. Like uh, if you have experience this, uh, what country bean, what we eat in Karnataka, Aurekai, sir. Aurekai, a country bean, uh, when it is uh, dried and uh, eaten, uh, you see uh, it will be cooked for a long time. It has to leach out. That brown uh, things has to come out. Then only it will taste good. Otherwise, it is very horrible to eat that. Because of the leukocytes. Ah, Melia. Goats they prefer. Goats. Goats like a neem, what they eat, they eat. Cows they don't eat. Cows like neem, na. Cows, cows especially. They are very, very selective. Very selective they are. Cows won't eat whatever you give. Cows are very selective. Buffaloes, okay. Buffaloes, they eat. So stall feeding you do. Dry matter also they eat. But cows are very selective. They don't eat whatever you feed. Uh, because they eat whatever they get in this area. That's why cow is slim and buffalo is. <laughs> Nutrition also. Cow milk is always better than buffalo's milk. Research also tells na fat content is more in buffalo milk. But cow's milk, all other uh, nutrients what you have, cow milk is uh, good for health compared to buffalo's milk. Because cow milks contain a lot of other nutrients which are that's why even infants also, they are not fed with buffalo milk. They are fed with uh, cow milk because it's very near to mother's milk. That's what is the research says. I think a cow's milk is preferred more. Okay, anyway, these are all my experiences after taking this project. That's all. <laughs> We have completed. Uh, like then, if there are no questions, then we will conclude uh, this lecture. I take this opportunity to thank uh, our GCR sir uh, for his uh, wonderful uh, inaugural uh, address, and I thank uh, B S Chandrasekhar for delivering uh, lecture back to back on tree species as well as grass fodder species. And I also thank all the learned participants who have taken their valuable time to participate and listen to our lectures. Then I also thank our colleagues from IWST for their kind presence, uh, physically as well as virtually. Thank you very much. Thank you one and all.